Glory to be in the presence of God, to be honored by God, amen. What an honor that he knows, what an honor it is that he knows your name. Glory. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you guys for listening to the ushers. As the ushers, uh, they're just trying to help you, that's all. They're not trying to tell you what to do or anything like that. You know, uh, we're just to uh, cooperate, cooperate with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? That's what we're called to do in Jesus' name. So I just want to encourage you guys to listen. Listen to the ushers. Uh, they're good men. They love the Lord. They, li they love each other, right? Amen? They love each other. Way to go, Tino. Good job. Yeah, thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows what I'm talking about. So uh, just beautiful to be in, in the presence of God. Welcome, Turning Point Fellowship on YouTube and Facebook. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being part of what's happening here in the house, in the sanctuary of God. Amen. Amen. It's, uh, it's good. It's good. You know, if you guys stand up for five, little two minutes, it don't matter. Amen. You're standing up. We're always sitting down most of the time, right? All right. That phone takes a lot of life. Don't they, they have an app, right, that tells you how much you use it? Yeah, yeah they showed me one time. I'm like, wow, wait, that's a lot of time on your phone. I know you watch uh, videos and you watch movies and stuff like that. It's not always just, you know, texting and gossiping and all that stuff, you know. But uh, sometimes we just need some time with God. Amen. Hopefully you guys are watching videos, listening to the, the, the scriptures, you know. That's how you're going to get better. I want to teach the, the young people here in our church, you know, the teenagers. I want to teach you guys how to pray. I hope your parents are teaching you guys how to pray. Therefore, when trouble hits your life, because trouble is going to hit your life, you know, at your guys' age from 12, well, it probably goes earlier than that now, but from 12 to 21, you know, uh, you just, you need to learn to depend on God, right? You need to pray. You know, there's going to be difficulties. There's going to be times in your life that whew, you're going to think it's over. It's not. It's not. And you have to learn to pray. You got to learn how to believe God and trust God. Even when you're by yourself at home, you know, I got to pray. I don't need to hear my friends. I don't hear my mom and dad. I need to pray. If you go in the shower, if you go in the tub, if you go outside in the patio, if you're in your car, just I need some time, you know. What are you doing sitting in the car? Talking to God. For next time they see you, like, oh, okay, I must be talking to God, right? That, you know, we, we really have to discipline ourselves in that. I know discipline seems like a hard word, but it's not. It's a, it's an, it's a word of order. That we need, to, we need have to have order in our lives. That's why we blow it and we mess up. I'm raising my hands. That's why we mess up because we... Uh, we don't have order sometimes. It's chaos. Especially if you're married or you have a family. Oh, my God. It could be chaos, huh? <laughs> it could be chaos, right? Chaos right here. In the spirit, the soul, and the body. Yourself. You're fighting yourself. You know what I mean? God is giving you a, a, a vision, a dream, and all of a sudden the enemy tries to steal it. And all of a sudden you're fighting and you're arguing, and then you're not even, you don't even do the vision or the goal he's giving you. Like, what happened? God is like, what happened? I don't know. I listened to somebody. He told me not to do it. Well, if God says do it, let's do it. It's one step, one step at a time as we draw closer to God, as we honor God. Are we going to do uh, the uh, English to Spanish? Say the word? Yeah, translation. Thank you, sir. You doing it? Not right now because you're going to sing, right? Not saying you're going to worship. Okay. All right, thank you, yeah. We are going to have a, the translation, if you want to let her know. Si la vamos a tener. Pero yo no hablo español muy bien, lo hablo bien pochito. Pero hay uno aquí que es bilingüe. Eh, si lo habla bien. Ahí está. El Fernando de Camino. Es de Comina, es Colima. De Armería Colima, por favor. Es de Colima, México. Amén. Yo soy de Los Ángeles, you know. So I'm pochito. <laughs> oh, you guys, oh, you guys good speak. 
I wanted a woman, too, to help me do translation, you know. So you got to pray on it, you know. Amen. So uh, we're going to open up in prayer, and then we're going to do our announcements. We're going to do our announcements first. We're going to just do our announcements first. That way. Go ahead and have a seat. Have a seat. Point uh, sentad. Thank you. You guys go ahead and sit down on the, on the grass, on the grass, on the carpet if you want. Oh, come on, my brother, man. Give me a hug, my brother, man. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> love you, my brother, man. Love all you guys, man. I really do. I love you guys. Enrique doing an awesome job, man. Now you're dealing, hey. I said, now, now you're dealing with the pastor that's come back now. <laughs> hey, man. I told the men at the, uh, at the men's meeting uh, about a month ago, I said, I'm back. I'm back. You know, you guys are uh, here, Pastor, now. My strength in God, not in my own God, not in my own strength, but in the strength of God. Amen? And Jesse, you know who I am, right, little brother Jesse? You know who I am, huh? We're strong, right? That's why you lasted so long, because you're strong, brother. Full of courage, full of power, the power of Jesus Christ, brother. Amen. How old are you now, Jess? 81, 82? Ooh, you is a veterano, eh? <laughs> yeah, Jess. Right on, Jess. 86 años. My God. Imagine if we make that, huh? Yeah, he's over. <laughs> he's in the presence of God. So here we are, Women's Conference on May 17th through the 19th. Come on, ladies, young ladies. I hope you young ladies go. I hope you young ladies go. I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. Thank you. You're right here in my eyes, that's why. I hope you young ladies you know, they go, you guys are 30, 40 years old. You're still young. You're young. You're full of life. Amen. I, I hope you guys, you, not guys, you young ladies go and have an open heart. Even our seasoned people, we can still, they can still teach us something, brother. Amen. They can still, you can, you can still teach us some things. I'm, I'm open. I'm fat. You know what fat means, right? Faithful, available, and teachable. I'm a fat boy. Amen. Amen. Go ahead real quick. Go ahead. Um, in regards to the women's conference, we need the balances. We went over everything yesterday, and if you owe, please pay off the balance. We need that as soon as possible. And the second thing is we take a picture up there and we collect the $7 up there. We want to collect it now. So you have today and next week, next Thursday and Sunday to pay it. We don't want to go up there and start collecting the money. We know at 1 o'clock the lady wants to take our picture and be done. So let's have the money paid now so when we get there, we don't have to deal with any money. Everything's paid off. So please pay off the balance. And Sister Conce, you can give her the $7. And if you can't find her, you can come see me. Thank you. Man, amen. Yeah, this, uh, you ladies are real good in that. You guys are better than us men. You guys are a lot more order. Our men, we're looking around like, oh, we got to... I need six bucks. I need seven bucks. And you knew last year what you needed. Amen. He says, come back. Yeah. You know what you needed. Even some of you guys are like, oh, I don't, Pastor, I don't have all the money. Can you pay a hundred bucks? I'm like, my God, you knew last year that it was $200. What, what does it come out to? Like $10, 15 bucks a month? Yeah. yeah. Throughout the whole year. If you pay 10, 15 bucks a month, four bucks a week? Five bucks a week, you're way ahead. Five bucks a week, just drop in there. Women's meeting, women's conference, uh, men's conference. And Odessa will take care of the rest of it, right? And she'll keep you boom, 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 boom. And then the inside too, Sandra and, uh, uh, hey, guy. Sandra and uh, Margarita and uh, uh, Bobby Joe, they take care of it too. They, just like our men, we have uh, Fred and we have uh, Andy that take care of that stuff. So, uh, They'll keep, they'll keep you in order. They'll keep you right, you know, amen? And whatever's left, you're not going to get no change. Don't, right? Do not ask me for change. It's going to go to somebody else, amen? We're going to bless other people. And that's how you should be given anyway. Say you gave 20 bucks, so what? Now you paid for somebody. You paid it forward, 
Amen. People have paid forward for you many times, right? Your parents are paying for you forward. Amen. Week by week. Week by week, little angel. All for free. You open that refrigerator, boom, there's food. It's beautiful, huh? Get to ride in those nice cars. Got gas. That's what I tell my kids, man. All for free. All for free. Don't charge you. Don't cost you nothing. Right, Bubby? Don't cost you nothing. Got your own room, computer, big screen TV, air conditioning, heater, washer, dryer. Whoo, my God. How blessed you are in Jesus' name. Right, Big Jesus? I call you big because you're a big boy, brother. You're thick. Amen. Prayer every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Come on, guys. Join us. There's power in prayer. You want your life to change. You want your family to change. You want your husband to change. You want your wife to change. You want your children's lives to change. Prayer. There's power in prayer, in a community prayer. We need to pray for each other. You guys need to come, you know. just uh, It's Tuesday. I live out there in Linwood and Compton. It's far. We partied all in Riverside. We partied in San Diego. We Party other than Wilmington. I know Pastor Andrew did when I out in Hollywood. I don't know how I found myself up in Hollywood a couple of times. Like, how the heck am I doing way out of here? But but when we come to church, far. Mm, come on, let's have some ganas. Let's do it. Amen. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Thursday night Bible study. Come on, we we just opened up. Whoa, we just opened up. Second Timothy. Chapter 1, I think we've gone through the first seven vel, uh, uh, verses. I encourage you guys. I encourage you to come on out. I know Thursday night, some of you guys get lazy, don't eat. Eat some fruit. Eat some vegetables before you come. Because if you eat those enchiladas and pork chops, that meatloaf, you ain't going nowhere. You're going to sit right there, right? And boom. I, I can't say other things because then I'll get in trouble. Say amen. <laughs> All right. We had a wonderful time yesterday, men of a higher standard. We had Minister Andy give us a word. So uh, it was awesome, amen. It was awesome. Uh, a good word of who's your Moses? Who's your Joshua? Who's leading you? Who are you following? Amen. We should, you should all have Joshua's. <clears throat> You should all, you Moseses should all have Joshua's. All my leaders in the church, if you're a leader of my church, you should have someone you're mentoring. Someone you're teaching. Someone you're showing them the ways of the Lord. Amen? That's the, even as fathers and mothers, you should be praying for your children and teaching them the ways of the Lord. And I can look at your kids. I'm not going to look at them. I'm going to close my eyes. But I can look at them and tell you, mm, mm, mm. You need to be happy. You need to be glad. Your parents need to be glad. Your father, your mama, your daddy, oh, I'm going to get a little Ebonics on you. Uh, you need to be a little happy. There you go. They have smiles. They have a little brother now, huh? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So just that, uh, the men's thing. I said, well, just get ready, women. It's coming up in about two weeks. Are you ladies ready? Come on, give a shout to the Lord. You young ladies are going? Okay, let's go this way over here. <laughs> you know I'm having fun, right? But you're not going. Hey, did you guys pull their ears? Ozzy? Pull their ears, my brother. Come on, you still in charge, my brother. It's tu casa. Tu eres el hombre ahí de esa casa. You're the pastor, you're the priest. Just back her off. Get back, girl. You think you're my boss. You're not my boss, girl. Amen. God set me free in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All oh, the women are like, mm. <laughs> Get in order. Get in order, ladies. Get in order. You're the helpmate. That's what God called you. Helpmate. You're there to help that brother to become everything God has called him to do. And if you help that brother, guess what? You're going up with him, too. You're going up with him. If you do it right. Right, Stephanie? See your man? But it's stepping up. A whole different man now, right? Took time. It took time. Still got a long way to go, but he's doing good. He's doing good. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, let's all stand to our feet. We're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. Uh, trying to be funny. I know I'm not funny, but I'm trying to be. <laughs> Thank God I don't have no one else telling me, that, oh, you're not funny. <laughs> How you doing, Pastor Joe? Good? Yeah, baby, right on. Good to have you, man. How's Sister Roz doing? How you doing, Sister Roz? How you doing? Blessed. Say, I'm blessed. That's right. Amen. Blessed are the Lord. Glory to God. How you doing, Selena? Good? Right on. Right on. Praise God. Miss Priscilla, how we doing, sister? Good. Amen. Amen. We're, we're, we're blessed of the Lord. I just want to encourage you guys to bless the Lord, honor the Lord. We're not religious folks. I'm not a religious guy. If you guys, and if any people in my church is religious, let me know. They're religious. Let me know. I'll talk to them. We're not religious people. We have a relationship with Jesus Christ. God is not going to take away your personality. It's who you are, but he's going to sharpen your character. That's what he does. He shapes. How you doing, baby boy? How you doing, mijo? Good. Right on. Good morning. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for coming out. Hi, mijo. How you doing? Good. Right on. Man, it's a blessing. Wow. What a blessing. Those, they're Hernandez's. I've been praying for them for about 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> That's my family right there, baby. Been praying for the Baruches and the Medellins and the Hernandezes for 30 years that they would know Jesus Christ. Not religion. We're not religious folks. We're free, right? Aaron, we're free, right? You still love Jesus, right? Even if you didn't win the championship, you still love Jesus, right? How'd you do in track? Where'd you end up at? When, and running track, would you end up semifinals or something like that? Oh, you didn't finish it? Okay. Amen. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. Because my son ran track, you know. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. Oh, fat boy now, man. <laughs> Father, we love you. We bless you. We honor you, Lord God. You are Lord. You're our Savior. Without you, Father, where would we be? Who would we be, Lord, if we didn't have you in our lives? We thank you for the peace, the love, Lord, the forgiveness you've given us for our sins. When we receive that through Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, that he died on the cross, that he was buried three days and he resurrected from the dead. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us, praying for us. His very presence in the, helm, in the heaven realm is our forgiveness, is our courage, is our understanding. Father, we thank you and we bless you for what you've done in our lives how you changed our hearts, how you changed our minds. We're changed, Lord. We're not the same people who we used to be. And we just thank you for the love, Lord, that you loved us. You covered us and you continue to cover us that no matter what we do, our sins, our faults, our shortcomings, Lord, your love covers us. How beautiful is your love, Lord God. It's greater than the love of a mother or grandmother, Lord. Your love is, pr is premium, Lord, premium, your love. There's no words that can describe your love for us. Your love changed us, Lord, saved us. I just want to say thank you. So grateful for who you are, Lord. Jesus, the son of the living God. Jesus, the God in the flesh, Lord. Our God. I thank you that we believe, Father. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives within us, that leads us and guides us, that orders our steps, Lord. Reveal yourself to us today, Lord. 
Reveal yourself to every one of us here as an individual, Father, and as a family. Speak to our hearts, speak to our conscience, to our mind, to our soul, Lord, to our emotions, Father, to our will, to our purpose, Lord. Reveal to us your wisdom and your understanding, Lord. As I preach and as I share the gospel of Jesus Christ, I pray that life comes to them, Lord. Change comes to them. Healing comes to them. Forgiveness comes to them. That they would forgive those, Father, who have caused them pain, who has caused them sorrow, who has caused them bitterness, Lord, and anger, that they would forgive them, Father, just like you forgave us. I pray in Jesus' name for the children, that you watch over the children. You keep every wicked and every unreasonable person away from them, Lord. And you protect them and you watch over them wherever they go, Lord. You watch over their household. You watch over them, Father, when they're at work, when they're at school, college, at the university, Lord, even in life. Just walking the streets, Father, that they be divinely protected by your angels that surround them. So I thank you and I bless you. As we worship you, as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ, the Father, let all those things that burden us, Father, every those things that weigh us down, let us just cast that to the side right now. And let us enjoy the worship that we worship towards you, Father. We worship you and no other, no other thing. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. And we bless you for the peace and the love in our hearts. In Jesus' name, And everyone said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. All right, we're ready to worship. You guys ready? Thank you, Lord. Good morning, church. I said good morning, church. We're going to do a real quick exercise. I believe the Spirit of God wants us to do as Pastor Angel was speaking. I want everyone to just smile real quick, as big as you can. Just give a huge smile. I know some of us are like great. And just... The Spirit of God will want us to know that when he was up here and when he was sharing and he was saying some things that, that made us laugh, that that wasn't just a casualty. The Bible says that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And what he was doing was he was allowing the spirit of God to flow and to move and to make us laugh because some of our hearts need healing. Some of our hearts need the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit because some of us have had a rough week. And the smiling that we did every single morning that you wake up, God is doing that over you. The Father God is smiling. He's like, that's my son. That's my daughter. They're going to fulfill my will in this earth realm today. How many of you know we have a, we serve a supernatural God? Our God has never lost a battle. He's never lost a fight. He holds all victory in the palm of his hand. You never lost a battle 
For you are things are possible. For you are supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. For you are supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. For you are supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, 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 unchangeable, unchangeable, unstoppable, unshakable, supernatural God. Give him a shout of victory. Come on. Hallelujah. Give him a 
a shout out back to this beautiful Sunday morning. If he has set you free, give him a shout. If he has delivered you, if he has healed you, give him a shout. Hallelujah. try to hurt or harm me or my loved ones or my friends, the goodness of God has kept and preserved me. It's insulating me. It's insulating us right now. Whatever the world is talking about, you know that God is about the total opposite. In his word, he says that he has a plan to prosper you, of good things, not to harm you. We serve a good God and a good father.
for your goodness has kept us, Father. You're not here by coincidence. Come on. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. We desire to touch, Father, today, Father. We desire more of you today, Lord.
what your heart today. I open up my heart to you now. But allow in your heart. So do what only you can. And Jesus have your
Okay, as we get into uh, uh, the tithes and offerings section of our service, I uh, just want just want to uh, just want to touch on a couple things. Book of Malachi. 
we always hear, I'll open up the, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. And it's probably one of the most well-known tithing verses I've ever heard. But I want you to focus on a, a couple verses, 11 and 12. It says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So that he's not going to destroy the fruit of your ground. When you go to work and you're turning over that ground, he's not going to destroy it. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit in your field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be the delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Your friends are going to look at you and say, why is he so blessed? He doesn't have the tools. He didn't go to college. Where did he buy that big car? Because God's blessing you. He's blessing what you're doing. But I want to draw your attention to one thing. This is the book of Malachi. It's an interesting book because it's the last book. It closes out the Old Testament between the book of Malachi and when you get into the New Testament, Matthew, there's 400 years. 400 years and God is completely quiet. Completely quiet. Now, if you're going to be quiet and not say anything, do you think the last thing you said would be pretty important? I think it's important that we look at this and we say, wow, he's talking about tithing right before he goes quiet. Why? For the same reason, when your kids are growing up, you tell them, don't get into the car with strangers. Look both ways before you cross the street. Not because you're threatening them if you don't do this, but you're blessing them. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be safe. God is giving us some real basic foundations here. Now, couple points, and I'll get off. Promise you I won't go long, Andy. Okay, before you bring your tithe, though, preparation. Preparation. Every week, or every, as the Lord blesses you, put aside 10%. And everybody has different numbers, okay? So 10% for Pastor Joe. Argue with me later. Put aside 10%. Bring it to the church. That's your minimum tithe. 10% of whatever the Lord gives you. I'm not going to talk before taxes, act after taxes, as you know. <laughs> Expectation. Expect that as you do your part and you bring your offering to the Lord, like he says, what's he going to do? Bless. He's going to bless you. He can't lie. He can't lie. It's impossible for God to lie. He's telling you here, this is what I'd like you to do. I want to bless you. Articulation, big fancy word, pray. Pray. Pray over your tithe that the Lord, is, as you bring it before him, humbly, he's going to accept it and he's going to bless it. Now, saved by faith, right? But faith without works is dead. Do you have to work in order to be saved? No, but if you have saving faith, it's going to produce works. It's just a natural outgrowth. Motivation. Motivation. If you give unto the Lord with a right heart, it's going to be the right motivation. If you've got the wrong motivation and you don't want to give unto the Lord, eh, go buy a Jack in the Box smash burger, whatever. It's the wrong motivation. I'll go for the tacos, Andy. But uh, uh, bless, bless with the right motivation. And then do it coming from here. He knows if you can or can't afford it or whatever. He knows what you're doing, but just be obedient. The Lord loves obedience. Why? Because it's a demonstration of our faith, putting our faith into action, producing works. Amen? And lastly, <laughs> exhortation. Praise the Lord. Lord, thank you that I have the ability to give you this money. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for providing for my family. Thank you for the things that you're going to do, even if it's not in your account right now. Exhort the Lord, not speaking it into existence like some people are going to tell you. If, you're, if you stay on the right track, stay in your lane, and you're praying according to God's will, when you speak it, it's going to happen. But if you're that little 12-year-old kid that says, I want, a, I want a portion, I'm 15, good luck. Okay, so as we give, examine yourselves, give to the Lord. QR code, QR code is up here, you can scan it, you can give that way. Anybody needs a, um, an envelope, please raise your hand. 
these young men will ever go. Handsome married men. I hope they're married. Okay. As the, uh, uh, as the worship team plays, I'd ask you to come on up and present your offering before the Lord as we give back to him what belongs to him. Amen. family, if you'd please extend your hands, let's bless this offering. Father, we come to you right now, Lord, and Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the way that you've been abundantly blessed every one of our families, Lord, and as we bring forth our gift to you, Lord, we just, as we give back, Lord, pray that you'll move in our pasture, move in the fellowship, Lord, to spend this money as you would see the need, Lord as you would have it. Father, I pray that it's a blessing on all those who receive it. Father, I pray that right now, Lord, move in our hearts, Lord, right motivations, right prayers, Lord, in every way. I pray that you pour down your grace on Turning Point, Lord. Pray that right now as we get ready to get into the service, Lord, this is just the beginning of a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord. As, as you move in us, Lord, help us to receive your word, Lord. We're starting it off, Lord, in praise, exhortation, and giving back to you. Lord, bless this time now. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen. amen. Okay. Kids, today you're staying in. Yeah. Okay. Worship team, thank you.
Okay, at this time, I'm going to ask our pastor to come up and lead us. Pastor Angel. Hallelujah. Good to be in the house. Fernando, good to see you, my brother, man. Right on. I love you, man. I love you. I want you to know that, mijo. What a blessing it is. Now, go, go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. I've been talking about a, a journey with God. And our life is a journey. And God has ordained our steps. He's, he's ordained the way we, we live, we walk, we carry our, ourselves. And that's it. And what path God has already made for you. God has made a path for every one of us. And at times we don't understand that path we're on. Sometimes it's rough, but he smooths it out. Sometimes it's crooked, but he straightens it out. Amen. How many times has he saved your life, you know? Many. Many of you, huh, Jesse? How many times has he saved your life out there when you were making a mess out of it? Yeah. Huh, Judy? How many times did he save you? Huh, Rhonda? How many times has he saved us? Huh, Jesse, back there, how many times did God show you mercy and grace? Yeah, she's saying 10, 10, 10, all kinds of times. Amen. That's how gracious and that's how good God is. Even when we didn't even know him, when we didn't know his plan, when we didn't know the journey we're on, we're just like, we were like blind men just filling our ways around life. We had no understanding. Our eyes were not open. We were blind to the goodness of God, the blessings of God upon our lives. We were living, que sera, sera. And there's people still today in the church, not just Turning Point, but in churches all across this nation, all across this earth, that they live blindlessly. You know, whatever, you know, people do this, and I was taught this, I've been a pastor for 20 years, and I was taught this, that you can't just open your Bible and say, oh, well, here it is, this is the word that the Lord, sometimes it does work. But that's not the way we operate. God operates in order in our lives. He, he blesses us. He has a purpose for your life. He's called you with a purpose, and guess what? He's called you on purpose. Amen? That's what he does. Chris, you know you're an you're a office of coordinator, head coach, whatever you did, right? I would just watch you here. You had to have a plan. Right? For that team, for the defense or offense or special uh, uh, teams, you had to have a plan. You had to have a purpose. Our purpose is to score. Our purpose is to win this game. If you don't have that for your team, then you're just, que sera, sera, uh, luck. And we don't believe in luck as Christians. If you look up the word luck, you'll, and you go deep into it, it means Lucifer. We don't, we, don't, we don't do that. We don't, uh, 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 last week I said, uh, we, don't, we don't live by vibes. I, I'm sending vibes to you, good vibes. You know? I go, what the heck is that? Christians are saying that on Facebook. Vibes your way, vibes. Mm, I wish I could tell you guys what I really mean, but <laughs> I can't, you know. Uh, no, we, we, we live by faith in God. Uh, that, that's where our faith is at. We trust God. Our confidence grows. As you, as you learn to read the word, as you learn to meditate upon the word of God, life begins to, to grow inside of you. And you begin to exercise the authority and the power that you have not to be all that you want to be and to get all big-headed in the knowledge of God. No. To overcome this earth. To help others, to bless others, to understand the ways of the Lord. And when we do that, we do it in love. We do it in kindness. As Christians, that's our, one of our best fruits is faith, hope, and love, he says, right? 
Faith, love, and hope. And the greatest of all is what? Love. Say it again. Love. love. The world and people that don't know God should know you by your love. And our first ministry is in, the, in, in our families. In our children, our wives, our husbands. That's where our first ministry, we can... We can be right here in church and you can speak in tongues and all this and that. You can jump up and down. Hallelujah. Start. That's fine. That's great. God, God wants that. God wants you to enjoy yourself in the Lord. Enjoy yourself in the spirit. His spirit is life. His spirit is breath. Without him, without his spirit living inside of us, you guys already, thank you, sir. You've already lived that way. I know I have. It took me 34 years to come to know the Lord. 34 years, and I was lost. And I came to a point in my life that said, you know what? I need Jesus. Everything is not working out the way I planned it. The way I wanted to do things and the way I wanted to live, it's just not working out. I'm making a mess of it. And the more that I want to straight things out, the more it gets crooked. The more I want to smooth things out, the, the more rough it gets in our lives. The Bible says that the things that I, I want to do, I don't do. But the things that I don't want to do, I end up doing. He says, who can save you? But Jesus. He's the only one that can save us. We need him in our lives. It doesn't matter about your attitude. It doesn't matter if you have sin or, or you're messed up the way you are thinking and, and living and you're living in sin. God can straighten that out. I came. I, amen. Come on. Amen. I came to Christ all messed up. I was full of sin. I was missing it. Anger. Bitter. All that stuff was happening in my life. But I, know, I knew that I needed Jesus. My life was not going to work out. Honestly, the life I was on, the path I was on, and many of you guys have lived this path. That maybe it wasn't to the, ex, to, to the extent that I lived, or maybe you guys lived a, a more, more extent life than I lived, but I knew it was leading me to death. I knew sooner, that, sooner or later I was going to die in my sin if I didn't change my life. And I told you guys this story many times that on my 34th birthday, my father called me, and he always called us, called all his boys and all his family. He, was, he spoke nothing but Spanish. It was September 34th, 1994, and he told me, Angel, uh, he would always say, happy birthday, you know, in his accent. He would always say, happy birthday. Feliz cumpleaños, mijo, you know. And he goes, but tengo una palabra para ti. And he says, I have a word for you. Word of the Lord. And I said, mm, I knew I was in trouble. Because my father was a Pentecostal preacher. And he didn't hold back. He didn't hold back. He just, what he, what he believed the Lord told him, that's what he said. And he just told me. He says, Angel, if you don't change your life, if you continue on the path you're going on, you're going to die. And you're going to die and you're going to go to hell. And I'm like, yeah, I can say amen now. Yeah, back then I was like, dang, this guy's a trip, you know, in my head, because I'm all messed up myself. You know, I'm like, man, pops, man, he just, my brother don't even know how to put no kind of sweet in it, you know, no, no cream in the coffee. It's just straight black, brother, you know. I said, hijo, man, this guy, you know. And I go, okay. And he says, so do you understand what I'm saying? I said, oh, I understand 100%. But I said, God has given me a choice. Dad, you know this because I know you know the word. So I get to choose because you do. You get to choose which way you want to go. But the circumstances be it belongs to God. He says, so live your life. Enjoy your life. I know what you're doing. I live that life. We were barbecuing. It was already like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. I was already, 
Yeah, there, already there, you know. And three weeks later, I was living in my little apartment garage, and uh, the Lord touched my life. And my life changed forevermore. And today, God can change your life. And I tell you guys this all the time. Because some of you come to church and you're not saved. Some of you come here and you're Christians. And, uh, uh, but you, if I was to ask you, are you going to heaven today? Some of you guys are like, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I believe the way you believe. It's not the way I believe. We believe according to the word of God. Not our, not our emotions, not our feelings, not our thoughts. And I know that all of us want our kids to go to heaven, right? All of us do. But sometimes our kids don't follow Jesus Christ. They don't want nothing to do with Jesus. So all we can do is pray. Pray and ask God for mercy. Ask God for patience. Get, have patience with them, Father. Have mercy on them. For our husbands, for our wives, our aunts, our uncles, our cousins. Our friends, our co-workers, we have to pray. And we have to believe. Mm. I almost said it. Where's my glasses? <laughs> I said it anyway. I want you guys to, I'm going to throw you a left cur uh, a curve ball, me, huh? uh, uh, Psalms uh, 38. This wasn't part of my, I just look at, these are my notes, but I just put that in today when I was sitting at my desk right in the office. The Lord had given me that last week, Psalms 38. And I said, what's Psalms 38, Lord? Psalms 38. Psalms 38. I'm going to go to Psalms 38. Amen. We're going to go to Psalms 38. I said all that to, to say this today right now. God chastises us. Do you guys know what chastising means? God will spank you. God will straighten you out. People say, oh, God doesn't punish. He does. He does. He doesn't want to punish you to hell. Just like you don't, we don't, we don't want to punish our kids to beat them and leave marks on them or nothing like that, you know. No, we want, we want to straighten them out. We want to chastise them because we love them. Just like what Pastor Joe was saying. You know, so, some of you, I watch the kids in the street, not your kids, other kids, and, and they're walking like this. They don't even look at the red light, the green light. They're just... And you hear the cars, it's your fault. Even grown-ups are stepping right out of the curb. Whoa, they ain't got the balance I used to have. Do you know? Uh, and, they ha and, they're, and they're on the phone. Your kids are trying to get your attention. You guys are Walmart. J.C. Penney's, wherever you may be, you don't even know where your kids at. You don't even know some, some uh, predator. Uh, what, how do you pronounce that word? P-R-E-D-A-R. Predator. Thank you. Predator. Uh, you don't even know if a predator is watching them because you're so busy. You already got them on the other side of the aisle, and they're by themselves. And they're only eight, nine, ten years old. You haven't even called their name for like thirty seconds. Because all it takes is three seconds, five seconds, and they're gone. Just like you, when you're texting and driving, all it takes is what? Three seconds, you're in an accident. So the same thing with us, that God watches over us no matter what we go on, but we're accountable for our lives. You're responsible for your life. Once you get, once you get to a certain age, you're accountable. Once you can say yes or no, you know that's right or wrong within your heart, 
you could be accountable for your life now. I would say nowadays, you guys that are 12 years up, you, you may be accountable for your age. I don't know. I'm just putting that 12. Because some of you guys that are 12, you act like you're 15. Some of you 15-year-olds act like you're 20 years old. And some of you 30-year-olds act like you're 25 years old. Yeah. Some of you 40 still act like you're 20-something years old. But here King David is being chastised. He committed a sin with Sheba, with Bathsheba, thank you. You guys know the story. That's why I, I struggle. Bathsheba, uh, he, he struggled because he lusted after her first. He saw her. He saw her beauty. And he went after her. And he lied. He lied to bring her home. He lied to lay, to lay with her. And all she had was one husband. And her husband only had one wife, her. But the King David had 500, 700 wives and uh, uh, concubines. concubines. That means those were women that were just given to him and he could do whatever he wanted to do with them when he wanted to do with them. I don't know how a brother can handle 700, 500. He can't even handle one. (laughs) One is enough. Can I get an amen? Amen. It better be enough, right? (laughs) Amen. But he blew it before God. And he messed up. And now he's talking with God. And this is his, his psalm. This is his poem. This is his heart to God. And on the journey that we're on right now, we're going to have our hearts broken. We're going to mess up. We're going to sin. I pray that we don't sin on purpose. Some of us do sin on purpose. But I pray that we don't sin on purpose. I pray that we, when we mess up, that we say, Father, forgive me. I've blown it. I've gotten too far with the liberty you've given me. God doesn't give us liberty and make us free to sin. He gives you liberty and forgiveness to live. That you can say no to sin. Now, I'm I'm free, so free in God that I can say no to sin. And I'm going to be challenged for this word I just said. I know this. Thank you. Because I know the enemy. I know how he operates. You make a, a, a confession, a declare out of your mouth that I can do this, I can do that in Christ. The enemy's going to say, let's see if you can. Talking real bold over there in that little pulpit, you know. Let's see if you can live that life now. And you'll be challenged. He was the king. He said a lot of things. He was arrogant. He was prideful. Big-headed. And women, too, can get big-headed. Women can get prideful. I'm not getting no amen on this side over here. But But we can all get that way. And here's David. Now, remember, he's being chastised. I want to say this. God doesn't forget what he says or what he does. God is not forgive, uh, for, forget, for, forget, uh, say it again, for forgetful. Thank you. He's not forgetful. God doesn't. People will tell me things, you know, pastor, you forgot. I said, I don't forget. I just don't remember when you want me to remember. <laughs> but I don't forget. I won't. You, you guys say something to me and stuff, and I'll say, ooh, that's right. I was supposed to do that Monday. I messed up, you know. But I'll remember it Monday night when it's already 9 o'clock. So I'll just send them a text, or I'll call them Tuesday morning. I apologize that I didn't call you back. This is the phone call from calling back Sunday night. But I apologize. I did not forget. It just I was let back, you know. 
Because you get busy. Especially when you're a leader. You got, I don't know how many departments. How many departments do we have here? Like 10, 15 departments here? And, they're, and I have, I don't know, how many leaders do we have? Like 40, 50 leaders at least. And I have to deal with all of them. You got to talk with them. And I'm not trying to make excuses for what happens. It just happens. I'm human. We forget some things. Can I get an amen? Do you young men right here, I know you guys are sharp and right there. Do you guys miss things sometimes? Do you guys forget things? Yeah, very good. Thank you. When I used to work, I used to have my computer all full of stickums. And my boss would tell me, Roots, take all those stickums off. Because I was the first desk when they walk out into the office, you know, and the first thing is, is going to see my computer. He says, take all that off. Write it on a notepad or something. You know, I said, no, I just take them off as I, I do it. Okay, I did that. I did that. That's gone. That's gone. I'll put another one up, you know. And uh, he would just say, clean your screen. Clean your screen. You leave a, he'll leave a, a stick on uh, me. Clean your screen. For I would not forget. And God is not forgetful. God is not forgetful. Amen. So here we go. Lord, do not rebuke me in your wrath and your anger, nor chastise me in your hot displeasure. For your, for your arrows pierce me deeply, and your hand presses me down. His right hand represents the righteousness of God. And you miss it, you blow it, you'll feel the pressure of God like, you're living wrong, you're doing wrong, you're speaking wrong, your attitude is wrong, your mindset is wrong. And I, I know some of us, these new, new generations, that they can't be told things like that because they get offended. My father, when I, my uh, head coach, I'm sorry, my head coach, when I played high school football, I played in the 70s. They would grab you by the face mask. They just... Snatch your neck and call you names that you wouldn't allow, but you could, you had to if you wanted to play, right? You can't do that no more, huh, Chris? They, they get hurt. Their feelings will get hurt, right? And stuff. Because I know he still po coaches, you know. But in our days, you could do all that. And he'd call you the F word, and mm, I can't even say the words because you guys will get offended. You know, and they're not bad words, it's just, you know, they would just say certain things. And it would hurt your feelings, but you shake that off and I got to keep playing. We as Christians, things, the enemy will say things to you, you got to learn how to shake that off. You got to learn how to dust yourself off and you got to keep going. It may be your wife, it may be your husband, it may be your brother, your sister, a good friend that will say things to you that are out of order. That doesn't mean you leave the church. Oh, I'm leaving the church, you know. Brother Fulano just said something to me and I'm out of here. You can't do that stuff. You got to have tough skin. You got to have a soft heart, but some tough skin when you, if you're a Christian. Amen? It's a trip because we were tough guys out there in the football field, baseball field, in the little neighborhoods you were in and things like that. You were a tough guy. Tough with your little friends and all that stuff. But all of a sudden, some, you know, you become a Christian, it seems like we become sissified. I stepped away from the pulpit, guys. We get sissified. You know, I, I didn't like that, you know, so I'm, I'm leaving the church. I'm never coming back here ever again. But your, your friends have called you all kinds of names. You know, they called you four, four, uh, four-legged animals and all that stuff. And you still keep coming back. I used to fight my friends and still go right back. We would just sit there, get drunk, and hug on each other. So, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah. And you go on with your life, right? But here in the Christian thing, it's different. So here he says, there is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger. That means that he's not at peace. Nor any health in my bones because of my sins. For my iniquities have gone over my head. They, they've caused him to bend down. And a lot of times, 
It's, it's not because you're sick. It's not because it's your, uh, your, your genes. I'm going to tell you guys, sometimes you walk like this, men and women, children too, because you're disobedient, you have sin in your life, and you're not willing to repent. Because once you repent, once you tell the Father, I'm sorry, I've sinned, I've blown it. And every one of us here have blown it. Amen. Now, no one, not one of us here is perfect. I'm raising my hand with you guys. None of us. There's only one that's perfect, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Jesus is perfect. We're not. We need work. But there's sometimes we walk like this. Sometimes because we're old already, we're getting older, you know. But a lot of times it's because you're sin. One time my pastor gave me a, we're at a men's meeting, he gave me, this was years, years ago, 27, 28 years ago. And uh, he was speaking to me, telling me what God wants to do in my life, but I was bowed down like this. And there was sin in my life. And you know we can do it real good as Christians. We're holy, we're holy. Everyone watch me, you know. And we know that what's in our mind and what's in our heart is not right. And I'm like this in front of him. And then he says, Angel, stand up. And I stood up and he grabbed the Bible. Boom! And he slaps me in the gut. I'm like, what the heck? You know? And I'm heal me like you guys too. You want to come right back, you know, but you don't. And boom, he just slaps you again. And he says, just repent, and God will straighten out your life. I'm like, what the heck? What is going on here? And we don't want to hear that as people, as men of God, as a woman, as children. You don't want to be corrected by your mom, right, Mia? Or your dad. You don't want that. Right, Aaron? Don't like that when the coach gets in your face and tells you stuff, right? But we do it to make us better and the team better. The same thing with us in the kingdom of God. God did that to me. And when I repent it, it's like a, a weight just came right off my back. I was like, whew. I'm like, oh, my God. I went to the men's conference. I wasn't in this church. I was in our church my wife, where I was born again. And I remember being, and I was talking to the brothers that knew me. They wouldn't talk to me because of my sin. And the Bible says that. The Bible says to shine them on. Shine them on. Shine them on. Because they won't repent from their sin. They'll continue to want to live in their sin and want the blessings of God. And it doesn't work like that. And that's why God punishes us in a sense. It's a chastisement. It's just a straightening out. Just counsel. He does it through his love, through his wisdom, through people, amen. And he chastises us to straighten out our life. Our lives are rough, full of sin, full of foolish thoughts. And he wants to make that smooth. It's crooked in your life, the way you think, the way you act, your attitude, the way you live and all that, you know. Excuse me, he wants to straighten that out. He wants to do so many things for us that we're not even able to think or imagine the work that he wants to do in our lives. I could not even imagine this life that I'm living today when I was out there. There's, there's no way that I could live the life I'm living today that I thought. I said, I'm ahead till I'm dead, and this is the way life is going to be. But God had a plan. And he has a plan for every one of you here. He wants to straighten out your life. It doesn't matter if you've been saved for five years, five months, five weeks, five days. God wants to do a work in your life. But there's some people that think that you made it. You've arrived because, you know, I'm born again. And No, God has to work in our lives. And I know some of you guys right now are thinking because I thought the same way. I don't want to hear this. I didn't come to church for this. 
Because sometimes it ain't all, you know, hurrah, hurrah, go, go, oh, yeah, yeah, praise the Lord, you know. Sometimes we need a little dusting off. We need a little polishing because we're kind of dull. The, the blade is dull, so you got to sharpen it. You know, the little sharpeners they have and they run the blade. You got to sharpen that up. That's our life. And we can look at other people and say, you know what, he needs some help. You hear the preacher? Huh? If you're the one throwing the elbow, you're the one kicking the ones in the ankle, you're the one who needs help. You're just trying to tell everybody else, you know, he needs some help, man. This guy's hurting. But you're the one. Because God works on us first before he works on anybody else. When I read and study the scriptures, God is straightening me out. God is polishing me out. Doing it to pastor. And then I can give it to you. But if I'm not studying the word, if I'm not polishing in the word, what good? What good does it do us? Verse 4 again. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. My wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly, like I said earlier. A lot of you can be saved, delivered, by one touch of God, by one declaration of God. There's a woman in the Bible, right, that was bowed down, right? For many, many years, this is the way she lived. Until Jesus touched her and told her, your sins are forgiven, and she got to set straighten up. A lot of us, our minds, our emotions, our conscience, our life, Spiritually, we're like this. Oh, naturally, you're like this. Yeah, you guys know what I'm doing? Some of you guys got a little hipness in you. <laughs> How we walk. But on the inside, you may be smiling. What's that song by Smokey Robinson? The, the clown, the, the. Yeah, you guys know it. Amen. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. We, we all know that, right? They're smiling on the outside, but the inside, they're crying. And there's many Christians like that right now, today, this very morning, in this church, in this church right now. And it's up to us to get set free. That's why I say, today you can change your life. If you're willing to do it, God is willing. And some of you say, looking at me like, not me, I'm good. I try to help homeless people. They live right here in the canal, right next door. They live right there. That's where they camp. That's where they live. That's where they do their business. And pastors here during the day, and you see them. And you go minister to them because they try to sleep here. They try to sleep on the grounds. And I tell them, you can't sleep here, brother. This is private pro property. I said, but I can help you. We can put you in a home. All right, Margarita? We can put you in a home. We can put you in a program, six months, a year program, and you can change your whole life. Today, if you take the step of faith and change your life, today your life will change forevermore. Oh, I'm good. Don't worry about me, man. I'm good. And you look at them, and they're toe up from the flow up. I say, are you sure? This is good. I can talk to them that way because I know where they're coming from because I was there. Because I was tore up from the floor up. I say, are you serious? You're good, my brother. Yeah. They think they got, because they got $20 and 40 bucks in their pocket, that they're good. I said, I'm talking way beyond material things, my brother. I'm talking about your spirit, your soul. Well, I already went to all that stuff. I, I tried the Jesus stuff. I went to church, and when I was locked up, the, and we used to go to do this, that, that. I said, I'm talking about your life right now. What's happening right now? I said, you're not good. You're not healthy. You're not sound. 
Oh, you judging us? Ain't nobody judging you, brother. You can live the life you want to live, brother. I'm just telling you what I see. Your fruit is telling me who you are, what you're about. Because the Bible says we'll know them by their, by their fruits, by their lifestyle. I can tell when you guys ain't feeling it. When someone's preaching, someone's talking to you, this, this is the word right here. Imagine if, if you came to talk to me and you're like this, or pastors like this in front of you. You think I'm receiving anything? This is reflection. This is like, nope. I don't want to feel you. I don't want to hear you. You're not open. And that's how they, these, uh, we've been here two years, and many of them, they don't even come here no more. They won't even want, there's only one that keeps coming. That brother don't stop. He keeps coming, and I keep ministering to him every time to him, I see him. Yeah, I said, you got to go, Brother Mike. I already know his name and everything. I said, Brother Mike, you got to go. And he's a brother. You guys know what I'm talking about when I say brother. I said, you got to go, my brother. Just let me stay here. No, nah, I said, we, we put you in programs. You went to programs and you walk away. I, I don't get along with people. I said, no, because you don't get along with yourself. You don't forgive yourself. That's why you can't get along with people. Because you got to forgive yourself in order to get along with other people. The wounds, the five, the wounds of my foul and festering because of my foolishness. I am troubled and I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all day long. Sorrowful person. It's always raining on you. Every day is raining. How's today? Great. Nope. You know, I, I say great, but other people are like, nope, not having a good day. I don't want to hear you either. Don't tell me about a good day. They, they want it to rain. They like the rain. We've learned how to dance in the rain. We learned how to smile in the rain. Amen? You got to learn how to dance when it's bad, when it's ugly in your life. Amen? For my loins are full of inflammation, and there is no sadness. Soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil in my heart. You, you guys have done that, right? You've grown like, because <sighs> there's trouble in your life. I know I'm giving you guys up, but it's all right. You're going to be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, all my desires are before you, and my sign, my sign is not hidden from you. This is trouble. This is a little sign right here when you're doing this. Even when you're at, by yourself and your kids, right? There's trouble. There's trouble in your life, and you need to get rid of this by confessing it before God. I say in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I desire you, uh, my desires before you. My sign is not hidden from you. My heart pants. My strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. You're no longer seeing life in a positive way. Motion, perspective has left you. Everything you see is negative. See the lady, see one of the sisters that is dressed real nice. Look at her. She thinks she's all that. My God, I wouldn't even, would never wear that. No, you can't wear that, sister. That's all. I know I'm being a little rough, but we do that. And some men, too. Look at that brother, he thinks he's all that, you know, he thinks he's all cool. Because the way they view things, the way you see things is all negative. It's, it's dark, it's raining, 
all the time. When can you be positive? And I try to help you guys. A lot of you guys, thank you, sir. I try to help you and try to live a positive life. I don't try to live a positive life. I live a positive life in front of you. We live to overcome. And it's up to you to smile. I tell you guys, practice that in your mirror, right? Don't I say that? Look in the mirror and smile. It's, it's easier to smile than carry a frown. Good morning. At work, you know, I've worked 19 years at one company, and that lady was always. Good morning. Shut up, angel. Shut up. She didn't want to hear me. Because I would say good morning to everybody in the office. There was like seven, eight people that I worked with in the office. And, hey, Anthony, good morning. Carol, hey, good morning. Go on, say, good morning, Tony. Good morning. How you doing, Nick, man? You know, how was your weekend, brother? Always trying to stay up on, on top, right? Amen? Amen? Brother, you ain't got to say hi to everybody. Why do you got to go around saying hi to everybody? I said, because we're supposed to be sunshine. Yeah. We're part of the sun. Jesus Christ. We should be glad. We should be happy. Amen. We have the greater one living inside of us. And you can't let them stop you. If they're poochy faces, let them be poochy faces. You go ahead on with your bad self. Be a poochy face. I'm just going to be a happy person. I'm going to be a glad person. Amen. Do I miss it? Sure I do. But most of the time, I'm going to be upbeat. You know, if you, if you ain't digging it, you ain't digging it. I'm digging it. That's an old, that's an old term, digging it. That's back in the late 60s and 70s. Can, I, can you dig it? Okay, here we go. Verse 10, yes. He says, my heart's pants, my strength fails me, for the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. Your perspective is wrong. My loved ones and my friends stand aloof from my plague. <laughs> Get back. Don't talk to me. They don't even want to be around you. Some of your best friends are like, mm, here she comes. Oh my God. But hi anyway. Verse 12. Those who seek my life lay snares for me. Those people who don't like me, they want wrong for me. They're trying to set me up for failure. God is trying to set you up for success. And I'm not talking about material success. Because you can have success materially. You can have a house. You can have a car. You can have a motorcycle. You can have a beautiful wife. But it's you. It's not about that. It's about the joy, the gladness that's inside you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And some of you were brought up in houses that were negative. And that's why you got to break that curse. You have the power, you have the authority to live in, living within you to break the curse. You know what? I'm going to be glad no matter what. So though my mom was a, a poochy face, everything was negative for her. So what? I'm not talking about my mama, but anybody else's mama. <laughs> My mom was, she, she was one that always helped me. My father was a little different guy, you know. You baruches know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> he says, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, but we have to make a choice. The curses of your life have already been broken because of what Jesus Christ did. Amen? So that's why I say you can't blame your parents. Can't blame your husband. You can't blame your wife. You cannot. You go ahead and do it, but you can't. Now it's up to you to live a life. I'm not, I'm not talking about the man right next to you. It's up to you. I'm going to live happy. I'm going to be glad. I'm going to enjoy my food. I'm not going to let you put a bitter taste on my food. I, I love eating this food, so I'm going to enjoy it. And yet, you know, I do do that stuff, you know. People tell me, like, shh, 
God, I'm enjoying my food, brother. You just go ahead and eat silently, brother, you know. And I do try to hold it with you guys. I don't do it, you know, because my kid is telling me, in front of them, you don't do that stuff. Well, I'm at home. I'm comfortable. It's all, mm. <laughs> all right, let's go back because he may be listening. Amen. Those who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek to hurt, uh, those who seek my hurt speak of destruction. You're always going to have the haters. You're always going to have the naysayers in your life. Don't be the nader, uh, Nathan the, na the naysayer. Don't be Nancy the naysayer. I don't mean Nathan over here. He's a little boy. He's beautiful. He's a beautiful young man. We're good back there, my Nito? Yes, amen. You guys know what I'm talking about. Those people that just, they can even not even tell you good morning without starting with a, a negative thought. They're like, oh, my God. I used to say, you got to kiss me before you insult me, man. You, amen? That's what we have to learn. You know, and I tell the brothers that now. Because keep it real with them. Kiss me, man, brother, before you come at me. It's 8 30 in the morning and you're already, you know, coming with all your problems. That's why I don't even want to talk to some people at the, at the office. I'll just like, do not disturb. <laughs> right? <laughs> my, my people who work with me in the background, like, Pastor's got his thing up, do not disturb. Because sometimes, man, all the problems come. I said, man, I still got to preach. I still got to meditate about what I'm saying. And you guys want to come. What happened last week? What happened three years ago? You're still hung up on that, you know? Get rid of that. Okay, here we go. Excuse me. My loved ones and my friends stand afloat, a loaf from my plague, and my relatives stand afar off. Twelve. Those who seek my life like snare, uh, lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction, a plan of deception all the day long. But I lift a deaf man, do not hear. I am like a mute who do not open my mouth. Isn't that beautiful? When you can become so mature like that, that you know what? I don't have to say nothing. I'm going to choose not to say nothing. I don't want to hear the noise. You can say whatever you're going to say. I'm not going to hear you now. I'm going to just become a death to you. I've taught our couples here in the church, right? Put your mouth over your hand. If you're about to say something that's going to start some fights in your uh, relationship, in your house. Oh, why are you doing that? I ain't going to start no pedo. I ain't going to start no trouble. Say what you're going to say and do what you're going to do, but just be quiet now. We got to learn that. And before you know it, you ain't going to have to do this no more. You're just going to be quiet. It's not good for arguing with him. No más ganar. You know that, right? <laughs> he ain't going to win. Who's going to win with an argument of person? The Bible says that it's better for a man to live on the roof than with a contiguous woman, with a woman that likes to. Like, where's he at? He's back in the, in the tree house, man, way in the back. You don't want to, don't want to hear you, right? Why didn't you come straight home? Because mm -hmm. sometimes I'd rather just be home by myself or away by myself. You know, we got to learn that. And vice versa, too. Vice versa, because I know I have a lot of women here that are liberals and things like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave that alone, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he says, but I, I, I li I'm like a deaf man, do not, uh, do not hear. I'm like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus, I am like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth is no response. Don't chase that man when he doesn't want to argue. 
And don't chase that woman when she doesn't want to argue. Don't chase them. For in you, O Lord, I hope. You will hear, O Lord, my God. For I said, hear me and let them rejoice over me. Lest when my foot slips, they exalt themselves against me. He says, it's better to be quiet, to be thought of a fool, than open your mouth and be known as a fool. Because sometimes we put our foot in our mouth. Both ways. It's not ever one way, especially if you're married. And you get yourself in trouble. If you have a relationship with somebody, a brother or sister, you get yourself in trouble. A boyfriend and a girlfriend. You get yourself in trouble. And remember that boy is not your husband. That girl is not your wife. They ain't there to serve you and iron your clothes and feed you and all that. I don't, hmm, I wasn't raised that way. Your girlfriend don't do that stuff. Your wife does that for you. Your husband does that for you. Can I get an amen? I know some of you guys are like, oh, oh, they're separating us apart. Yeah. I did counseling for many years. I was a marriage counselor for many years. And people say, Pastor, it sounds like you're trying to break us up. I said, I am. <laughs> what the heck? I said, if I can break you up right now, before you get married, it's better. Because if someone breaks you up while you're married, it's going to be worse. Now you got to get 50 way. 50%, 50-50. <laughs> Serious. So you got to figure who you're marrying out, right? Who you're marrying. You got to take your time. What I like, what I dislike. Do I want to spend the rest of my life with this cat? Do I want to spend my rest of my life with that woman? Because we get to know each other, right, during the time. And all of a sudden, did you know what? He leaves his boxers on the floor. In the shower, in the bathroom, in the, in the bedroom, in, you know, his shoes are just anywhere. Right? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you say, I don't want this. Because you have now still the choice before you say, I do. I don't care if it's the day you're getting married. You know what? Nope, I'm gone. I don't want this. I don't care if you spend $40,000, $30,000. You had to think about that before you spend all that money. Serious. People put all that money and then they're divorced in a year or two. Should have bought a house, dummy. You would have got half of that house. <laughs> I'm being honest with you guys. I am being honest. You got to weigh it out, right? Now you got her, baby. You got him. He was fine when he was 18, 19 years old, you know. Now they're a little older and stuff like that, you know. They're still fine in your eyes. I know that, right? He's still good looking, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> King David is going through a chastisement. And he's asking the Lord to forgive him and to cleanse him from his wrong. And he's looking at everybody else yet but himself. And we'll read about that next week. That he's examining himself before God and other people. And we look at everybody else but ourselves. You have to look in the mirror. And the mirror is the word of God. It's not that piece of glass. Because we look at that glass and we walk away and like, oh yeah, I'm looking real good. I'm looking real fine. But when you open up the Bible, it begins to talk about you. Where he can help you, where he can strengthen you, where he can bless you. But there's things that we have to do. 
that we have to straighten our lives. We want God like a genie. Father, in Jesus' name, save him right now. Just change his life right now. Look at him like, mm. Lord, one more time. No. <laughs> it takes time. It's a process. And you've got to learn to work together. And you got to pray. You got to pray for each other. You got to learn how to hold each other's hands, face each other, and pray. I'm not talking about for a half hour and they'll go pray for Italy and Hungary and all them. You know, pray for your marriage and for your household. Pray for your husband and husband. Pray for your for your wife. And if you're living with someone, I started like that two years ago, years, years ago. When I got out of high school, I got my kid's mom pregnant. I was 17 years old, and I lived in sin until I was like 23, 24 years old. So I know. I had to ask God to forgive me. Some of you guys uh, last it. They're Nazis. Yeah. Thank God for Lupe. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Jesse says, <laughs> the kids are like, mm -mm. <laughs> no. I, uh, it's putting up with each other, but making each other better. Making each other better. Even as a Christian. As brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ, we got to learn to help each other and encourage one another. Because we all have this in us. That'll be your homework, Angie, right there. Psalms 38. The twins, Psalms 38. Let it reflect you. Oh, I need to be worked at, Lord. I need work. And the two young men are like, mm. <laughs> I got him in trouble now. <laughs> huh. You're sitting in the back seat. <laughs> Father, I just love you and I bless you. I honor you. Lord, go ahead and stand to your feet. We're going to do communion. Thank you, Father. The ushers are there. They're going to hand you that out if you pick that up. If there's sin in your life, that you know there's sin in your life, ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask him to forgive you for your sins and don't go back and pick up that sin. Let it go. And learn to live a new life in Christ Jesus. That's what this is all about. The blood of Christ is represented by the wine. And the bread we're going to take is represented by the body of Christ. And when we take this, we take this in the remembrance of our Lord. But right now is a time, guys, pay attention. Right now, it's a time of reflection. For all of us have sinned. And all of us have fallen fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. And for those who recognize it and know that you sin, take it. Because the little ones, they don't know they're sinning. So we're not going to hold them accountable. But for you, it's time to forgive. It's time to release them from their sins, from their pain. And the Lord did that on the cross for us. He gave his life for our lives. He took on sin. He didn't sin. He took on the sin of the world for our sins. And it's his blood that is represented by this wine. This is grape juice. It's not wine. So I don't want you guys to go tell on your people, oh, man, they drink wine in that church. <laughs> they can drink wine, though. I've been to churches where they, 
I didn't know they were going to give me wine, but they did. They gave me a little cup, and it was wine. I'm like, ooh, that was wine. <laughs> I didn't sin. Yeah. And some of you guys really take it. That's religious. That's being religious. The Bible tells us in the book of Corinthians that God was, Jesus was upstairs with his 12 disciples. And he took a loaf of bread and he broke a piece. And he told his, told his 12 disciples, and there was other people there, not just the 12, there was more. And he says, this bread you're about to take represents my body that will be sacrificed for you, that will be given for your life. So when we break bread, we do it in the reverence of who God is and what he said. We don't do it just, thank you, Father. Thank you for the grub, whatever they say. Some people say that, you know, thank you for the blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not the way you pray. You're making fun of the stuff. Says, Father, forgive me for my sins. For well, I've sinned and I've sinned in front of you and only in front of you I have sinned, Lord. I want to thank you right now for this bread that represents your life. As I say thank you, I am grateful for the life that I live today through Christ Jesus, my Lord. So I take this in the remembrance of what you did for my sickness, my disease, and for my sins. I take this in a holy attitude toward you. Thank you. Partake in Jesus' name. Jesus grabbing a, a vessel, a vessel of, of wine. He grabbed the wine and he poured it into a cup. He says, this wine that you're about to partake of represents my blood that will be shed for the sins of the world. He says, when you do this, when you partake of this, do it in the remembrance of who I am. That my blood has cleansed you and made you right. So do this in the remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, partake. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you that you have forgiven us our sins, Lord. And that you have cleansed us, Father, from all unrighteousness. We thank you for the blood of Christ that covers our sins and covers our shortcomings, Lord, our sicknesses and diseases. Father, I thank you that by the stripes of Christ, we can declare that I have been healed. Father, I thank you for everyone here today that they have heard the gospel maybe in a different flavor, but they heard the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That forgiveness only comes through the repentance of our sins toward the Lord. Father, I pray that as they have asked for forgiveness, that you have given them your forgiveness. I thank you for the new life that we have in Christ. Thank you for the blessings upon their lives, upon their children, the divine protection. 
the sound mind that they have, the mind of Christ. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives within them. It speaks to them in, in truth. I thank you that your spirit reminds us of who you are. That you are the spirit of truth. The spirit of the living God that lives within us. Thank you. And Father, as we partake in the food next door, Lord God, I pray that we be full of joy, full of life, Lord. I pray that there's enough for every one of us, Lord God. I pray that the children would enjoy themselves, that the adults would enjoy themselves, Lord God. And we would be a blessing to one another, Lord. I thank you for everyone here today. I call blessings upon their lives, healthy life, long life, a joyful life. I thank you that today they heard the gospel, they heard the truth, and the truth has set them free. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If there's, if there's someone here that has never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you never ask God, forgive me for my sins, I've sinned. And there's some of you that have said that and you just went back and went back to your old lifestyle. It's time to rededicate your life back to Christ. That you would give your life to Christ. There's forgiveness here today. If I would have the mayors right here to my right, if you guys would just pull up there, right there. Pull Pastor Joe over here, Pastor Joe. Amen. Thank you, Lord. What about the Baruches? You guys ready? Right here. Always. Come on, right here, baby. You have, these, you have these people, these couples. Pastor Joe, an ordained minister, single man, loves the Lord, honors the Lord. Amen. You guys need prayer. They're here to pray for you guys. I'm going to go and meet the people. Is that okay? I, I, it's very rare I get to do that. But I'm going to go out there and visit the people and all the first-time visitors. First time visitors, did you guys get a card? No? Okay, give them a card there, please. Any first time visitors, raise your hand. Amen. All right, there's over there in the corner, right over there. Aquí también. There you go. You could pass that out. You guys just fill that up and fill that out. I'm sorry, fill that out. Give it to one of the ushers and uh, they'll just call you. When someone will call you and just say thank you for coming out, we're not going to get your information. We don't want your information, nothing like that. But uh, if you want to be on one of the threads, we have a thread that goes out, a devotional thread that goes out every week. I mean, every day, I'm sorry. Every day there's devotion that goes out to the women and to the men separately. That You just hear the word of God. You can read it and apply it to your life. Let the kids have fun. Let the kids enjoy themselves. So what, they get little soda on their, on their shirts and things like that. You know, they can have fun. Right, man? It doesn't matter if you drop some hamburgers on your thing. Don't matter. You can always wash that. Thank you guys for coming. I want you to know where the visitors are. Raise your hands for me, visitors, your first time visitors here. Raise your hands. Look around, guys. <laughs> Amen. There they are right there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go up and just introduce yourself to them. Let them know who you are. We are dismissed. Shake somebody's hand. Hope to see you back there underneath the patio. Not your husband's hand. But just, if you need prayer.